This is it for us. This is we had two OTAs this week. Tomorrow will be a uh, kind of a team bonding event. We'll have some things, we'll compete a little bit, have a little fun, uh, close the close the last day of school here today with with a little competition and some fun tomorrow for these guys and then uh, we'll be off on our way for the summertime and when we get back we'll be ready to go um, I did notice uh, I just had a couple questions on my end um, for you guys here I noticed we're a little light a little light today I was doing my inventory of who was out here today in the media I did notice that we're probably missing a couple guys maybe one in particular um, and I just wanted to make sure that was he was he here today in the building no he was not so yeah, so it's an unexcused absence today. Yeah, it was. It's a voluntary. It's a voluntary program for you guys, right? So we don't. You don't have to be here. I get it. Uh, but I just want to see if he was here in the building. He was not. He's okay. Unexcused absence for Paul today. Yeah, on the beach. I did see his beach picture, Paul. I'm right behind you. Uh, I, I might. I might be on the same beach. Who knows? But. Um, yeah, go ahead, guys. They're far away. Uh, Kelly, uh, finally having a joint practice an uh, announced against the Seahawks. Uh, how long have you been working to try to do that? How much uh, does did it work out that this is the team that you'll end up doing it with? Yeah, it was great. We, you know, you get um, you call around as as the schedule is being made, sort of after the draft, really before the draft, even um, trying to see who would be willing to work. Try to find guys you're familiar with, and, and sometimes the league accommodates those requests, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but for the most part, when you request it to, to work with a team, they try to make that work. Um, so we had trying to make sure we had a dance partner because they get filled up pretty quick with teams practicing together. And so we, we had requested to, to work with Seattle, uh, knowing that they'd be one of our probably likely preseason opponents. And uh, I talked to Mike for a little bit uh, in the spring, and, and they were all on board. So Excited about it. It's great work. I love joint practices. Uh, we'll get two days of really good work against Seattle prior to our game um, that Wednesday and Thursday since we play Saturday. Uh, but it's great. I'm looking forward to it. We would have, we would have, we had some conversations about some of the other teams that we play to see if we could make that work. So logistically, it gets hard. Um, but I do, I do two weeks or three weeks of it if we could. Um, it really changes up training camp, and you get to evaluate your guys versus other people, uh, other schemes. So excited about it. Love, I love doing the joint practices, and uh, I think our guys do too. Yeah, I feel really good. It, it's a lot of work. Uh, when you sit and reflect back to just the amount of things we've had to get done in a short amount of time, uh, our players have done a fantastic job uh, learning the information, being able to apply it. We've thrown all kinds of stuff at these guys uh, from a scheme standpoint, from a technique standpoint, and, and to their credit, um, they've done a really nice job of attacking those things and handling the information. It's, uh, it's exciting to me to, to see a team that, that works the way our team works and um, handles the amount of things that we've put on them over the course of a 10-week off-season program and uh, really can't ask for much more than what we got out of these guys over this, this off-season program and uh, puts us in a position to, to have a good training camp. You know, It doesn't guarantee anything other than that, and uh, hopefully when they get here in July, we're ready to roll and have a great familiarity with what we're asking, and we can play fast and get better and have a chance to compete come September. Obviously not, not available again today, but uh, how is he conditioning-wise, and is that any kind of concern as you, get, as you take your break and, and get ready to come back for camp? Concern, I'm not concerned, no. Um, you know, just one of those things that's, that's sort of lingered on him a bit. Um, again, don't anticipate it being a long-term issue for us, but um, didn't have any sense to rush him out here not feeling perfect. And so um, he'll get his work over the summer. I mean, he's got a plan in place, and um, I'm confident that he'll execute it. So biggest thing for him is is working still and getting in shape, ready to roll. He's obviously working, uh, not not in front of everybody, but he's here working. He's, he's not uh, getting the full field work, but he's here, and he's getting his work in. So um, anticipate him being ready to roll, and, and we'll see what he's got in training camp. Players a program to follow for these next six eight weeks, or you kind yeah. of just trust them to. No, guys have there's there's programs available. Our strength staff does a great job. Um, they they give them a take home program to follow, some guidelines, things they suggest they do, so they're ready to roll. Uh, and they be and the key is is to not waste the work they've done at this point. You know, take some time, take a week or two, take a break. But you know, you hit after July fourth, it's it's getting close. It's time to go. And and these guys are pros and they understand that. But they we give them any resource they need. Our, our staff, uh, performance staff, is here uh, every day. So if guys are in town, want to get a workout, they can come in and work. Um, there's no regulations against that. So um, they've done a great job, I think, with the designing of the program and with the take-home program as well. Uh, guys have whatever they need available to them. 
kind of your message to them, like on top of that, you know, just making sure you're taking advantage of opportunities the next two months, the next month and a yeah. half? They know it, you know, they know what's coming and, and everybody in, in football gets to, you know, I get to about the 4th of July and I start getting a little antsy, you know, I can feel it. I feel the season coming. I feel the, um, you know, the urgency start to pick up. I, I relax a little less um, at that point, but yeah, these guys know, they know what it takes. Um, they'll very rarely do you have guys report out of shape. Everyone's usually pretty much dialed in and ready to go because, you know, they know what's in front of them. A 17-game season uh, with a training camp is pretty daunting, and, and they know what they need to get ready. And the message is, is you've worked really hard at this point. Let's not let's not take a step back. Let's be ready to hit the ground running when we, when we start up in July. How do you feel like your rookies have done during this time since they reported for rookie mini camp to, to the growth of WNBA? They've done a really nice job. The, the rookie – experience um, in their first off season is always really difficult. They're, they're coming off of college seasons and training for a combine. Then they get into the 30 visits and then there's, they all of a sudden they get drafted and there's just a lot of things that go on. And then all of a sudden they hit the ground running and they're expected to learn football and learn new schemes and new systems and, and really be, you know, professionals for the first time in, in their life. And that part takes some growing and some learning and, and they've done a really nice job of, of drinking out of that per proverbial fire hose, if you will, and uh, taking a lot of information. It's starting to slow down for some of them. Um, some of them it'll slow down as we get started in camp. And then, you know, they play that first preseason game and they realize, oh, this is, it's still just football. And um, usually by then they're, they're starting to make cases for whatever jobs they're competing for. But um, it is a process for those guys. And I think they've done a nice job. Has a guy like Judy Lolly put himself in position when training camp gets here to, to go compete? Yeah, I think all those. I think all the rookies, even the, the the UDFA guys that we've signed, have have put themselves in position with the way that they've worked here. Um, their mental approach has been has been really positive, and so they understand that this is also, you know, we get the training camp. It's it's for real. There's there's competition for jobs, and um, I don't know too many NFL football players, and you know these are grown these are grown men that are competing for for jobs for feeding their families, and uh, it it turns a little bit. The competition ramps way up, and I think these rookies understand that, but if you want a job in this league, you got to go take it, and uh, that's that's the sort of competition you have to have. And I think our guys have that mindset. They've been learning this whole off-season program, but uh, the temperature changes when you get back in July, and it's a little more serious. Uh, and guys are really competing for spots, trying to make our team better, but ultimately trying to find themselves a job. And um, I think they're, those guys are up to the task. It'll make our team better for it. How likely is still have, how, uh, uh, those rookies still have some work to do either here or? On their own in the next few weeks before you come back? Absolutely, they do. You know, they, you don't take it for granted. This is the first time they'll probably ever really be on their own in the sense that no one's holding their hand over the summer. You know, there's no, so there's no summer workout program. They're, they're on their own. Uh, everything's available to them, but they got to figure out what they need um, to get themselves ready to play. And a lot of them don't know what that looks like because they've never played that long of a season before. So um, their, their education really never stops this whole first year. They still have to be here for another, uh, about another week. Um, and then they'll get some time to themselves. They need a break too, but they also know that this is, you know, it's go time in July. You're, you're competing for a roster spot, and the expectation is you're ready to do that. So uh, there's a lot that they still have to learn. They still got to keep studying. They still got to keep working um, to put themselves in that position. But um, so far, everything is, has shown me that they're, they're up to that task. How likely is it, how likely is it uh, between now and, and the opening of camp that you could still add a player or two, a veteran maybe, to create a little competition, a little depth there? Oh, yeah, there's, there's opportunities to add um, all the way through. I mean, there's, there's, there's time now we can still add, and then there's also another you know, player movement at the end of the in training camp when you talk about roster cuts. Um, but yeah, we're still actively looking. We, we'll never stop that process. We're always looking to add players um, that we think can help us in the right places. So uh, I would say that that's a that's an open ended uh, question because it's 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 a constant. You know, our, our pro personnel guys are always um, looking to see where we can get a little bit better and, and maybe add some competition and some depth. So uh, that door is always open until it's not allowed to be open anymore. How do you outline or kind of sketch out this off season for Will and like getting him ramped up? For like the summertime, right? Yeah, he he's got his process. You know, he's going to take a little time for himself, um, spend some time with his family, and then um, he's got a little trip with with some of those receivers planned. A, a little bit of a, a work uh, a work bonding and enjoyment trip, if you will, a uh, chance for those guys to to go get their minds right for the season. And then um, I know he'll take a little bit of time off of throwing, just because that's usually what quarterbacks do. And then they they come back in July and um, start ramping up probably two weeks before training camp. Uh, to get ready to roll. So he's got a good process in place. Um, he's got a plan for the summertime, which is good. It's a, it shows some leadership and some ownership over his, you know, his process away from here, which is good. So um, I feel really good about his plan. 
a particular message you want to ingrain within him going into the offseason? You know, other than what we've talked about every day, no, I, I just think his, for him, um, the most important part is, is keeping that urgency and tempo in how he plays, you know, keep playing faster, keep playing with more confidence, and that comes with more reps. Um, I really was happy with how he progressed learning a brand new way of, of playing football this year. And um, there's going to be plenty more reps in training camp in the preseason. And, and the key is to be ready to roll in September, playing at the speed that, that you got to play at, at the position in the NFL. And um, he's improved every day. He's come out here. And that's really all I can ask of him at this point is just to keep getting better over the course of, of the summer in the training camp. And um, we'll be ready to roll. I'm, I feel really good about where he's at. You said a couple different times this, this offseason that's been the busiest you've ever had with all sorts of things. Do you need a little extra time this late June and July to get yes. ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> organize your time to make sure you're ready to go full go. Yeah, well, you know, I just I keep adding stressful things on top of stressful things. You know, our, our moving truck is currently packing up in Cincinnati. It'll be here on Thursday. So now i got to add moving into a house and getting my family here for the first time as Nashville residents. So uh, one more thing to add to the list of things that got to get done. But I'll take some time. I'll, I'll take a break. But at the end of the day, I'm so focused on, on where this team can be uh, and getting ready to go play football that, you know, that part's fun for me. I don't, I don't really worry about that part too much. I, I like it. I enjoy it. So the work part doesn't bother me. But um, I'll get a little break. I need one. All right, last one. It means a lot. I think that that's a testament to that group. Um, you know, that's a group that that generally has to work as as one, probably more than any group on the team. Uh, those five guys that are playing have to be dialed in. They got to be together. Um, every good offensive line I've ever been around spends a lot of time together. Um, and so having them all here, that's just one more time that they're together. Um, I think they realize the importance of that, especially with young players. You have a, a rookie left tackle, a second year guard, a brand new center. Um, so there's there's moving parts and. The more those guys are together, the better off we're going to be. And um, I think they realize that and understand how important that is. So for me, it's great to see. I love seeing all those guys, you know, all the big linemen all running around together and, and practicing together because um, that's the only way I know that you can have a good unit is the guys that spend time together.